Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. In this video, I'd like to talk a little bit about nebulizers. And I'm going to show you this one that I've got for, well, it's quite amazing actually what you can get for around 40 pounds in the UK nowadays. So this is the machine I just got off Amazon. Um, there are many nebulizers out there, but it's quite amazing that you can get them for this cheap nowadays. So what's 40 pounds? It's what about what, 45 to 50 dollars or euros or wherever you are in the world. I think it's more or less the same price. But it's quite amazing that you can get one of these actually for this cheap. And it probably works because it had a lot of reviews. Now I'm not in any way sponsored by anyone who's making these machines. I just bought one off Amazon for this video. This is also a compressor nebulizer. So it just says right here on the box, compressor nebulizer. Now there are different types of nebulizer machines out there. This is the most common one you will find for this price. Now the fancier one, theoretically they are a little bit better. However, I think the differences are actually not that great for routine use for most use cases, I would say. And I think there's also a lot of marketing surrounding nebulizers and maybe that's why you will find all these sites comparing nebulizers to each other and suggesting that one is definitely much better than the others. But actually I did a quick search on PubMed, so in the published medical literature, and I couldn't really find a lot of solid evidence comparing nebulizers to each other. There are few studies out there. Most of the studies that have been done comparing nebulizers are actually fairly small, or they've been uh, suggesting that a certain type of nebulizer is better than not taking a nebulizer at all. So it's quite hard to actually gauge whether there is such a big difference between one nebulizer to the next. Now that being said, there are of course differences. There are differences in the mouthpiece that you use or the mask or what medication you use in the nebulizer. So for different use cases, you might find that there are differences between nebulizers. But I think this is the most common one you can get for this price range. And most patients would probably buy one of these or something similar. And it's likely for, for most medication, it will probably do the job. Always speak to your doctor, check all the information that I present in my videos, any information that you find online, do check it. This is not medical advice in your case. I'm just telling you general opinions, basically general medical information that I know. So it may not apply in your case. So that being said, I'm just going to get into the meat of this video and I will cover the following topics. Who may use nebulizers? An unboxing and showing you what contents are in this box basic instructions for the use of a nebulizer in general, I'll try to perform a demonstration with normal saline, discuss what medications can be nebulized, and at the end I'll tell you how these things can be cleaned. So to start off, who may use a nebulizer? This is an important question because these are not for everyone actually. Generally these are used by patients who have respiratory conditions such as asthma, COPD, bronchiectasis, or some other respiratory condition where they need to use inhaled medication. They are also used by those patients who cannot inhale properly. So sometimes you may have children, you may have people who suffer with arthritis and they cannot really use an inhaler. You may also have people with learning difficulties who also, again, cannot really understand how to use an inhaler properly and just synchronize their breathing with the inhaler. So in those cases, we may turn to nebulized medication. These things can also be useful in an asthma attack, for example, when you are really struggling to breathe because you're breathing so fast so you can't really administer the inhaler properly. So one of these nebulizers can be helpful in that instance. And also nebulizers are sometimes used in physiotherapy. So when you're trying to clear respiratory secretions or thick mucus that cannot be moved, sometimes you can use saline, hypertonic saline for that case in order to help loosen up the mucus and bring it up. Now, let's take a look inside the box.
So when you purchase a nebulizer, these are the essential components you will find in the box. This is the compressor itself that plugs into a wall socket. And then basically you have this tubing that connects here to this outlet. And then when you press the button, this will pump air through this tube. And then this will connect to a medication holder, which looks like this. And then the tube plugs into the bottom just here. I hope that you can see that quite uh, well. So let's do that now. Let's just plug this in. Let's plug this here. And then basically the next piece that you will need is some sort of a mask or a mouthpiece. Now this came uh, delivered with a pediatric mask, so some mask that can be used in children, but I am just going to use the adult mask. And obviously this device does have some space here where you can probably store some of these components in so that you have them for easy access, but there are different models and they all do pretty much the same thing. So again, to nebulize, you will need the compressor, you will need the tubing, you will need the medication holder, which is this little piece here, and then you will need either a mouthpiece that connects to the other end, or a mask that also connects to this place, like that. So basically that's all, all you need in order to nebulize medication. So what are the basic instructions for use of a nebulizer? Like I was showing you before, basically you will need to fill this cup holder, this uh, medication holder basically, with the amount of medication that you require. And it does have some lines here on the, on the side which show you the volume that you've put in. Now obviously that will depend from the application that you're using. If you're using a lot of saline, if you want to have a longer nebulization, you would fill this up more. If you need to administer a specific dose of medication, you will try to dilute that to the required dose based on your doctor's indications. In order to put the medication inside the nebulizer, basically you would need to unscrew the top of this medication holder, just like that. You take it out and then inside you will see that there is some sort of a cone so you're trying to put the medication to the sides of this medication holder, not in the center. So you, it will just sort of be on the actual sides. So you're going to try to fill this cup to the required amount. Once you've done that, basically you'll need to close the medication holder, which means that this top will have to screw back in. So sometimes it can be a little bit fiddly, so that's absolutely fine. You just need to find the way to screw it in properly. And once it's screwed in, you need to keep it upright. Now, you may prefer to connect the tubing beforehand or you can do it after, but as long as you keep it upright, because if you tilt it to a side, the medication will spill. So you don't want that to happen. So basically you would just plug in the tubing. You need to use a little bit of force so that it's really tight. And then it looks a little bit like that. And the, the, the tubing goes into the compressor where I showed you before. And you also need to attach one of these mouthpieces. So you can connect, for example, this one like this, and it just connects to the top. And then you would use this as a little pipe. So something like this. Or if you prefer, if you want to keep it on for longer, for example, you can use the mask, which then connects right here. But it's important to not tilt it because then the medication would spill. So you just have to keep everything upright. It's very simple, actually. You just need to get the hang of it. So with the mask, basically, you use it as a normal mask. It has an elastic band that goes over your head. So you can just put the mask like this. And then as the machine operates, when you turn it on, it will generate aerosol that you can then inhale. So let me take this off and I'll actually demonstrate with a little bit of saline solution so that you can see that it actually works. One important thing to mention is that when you are using the nebulizer, it's important to have clean hands. So I would suggest basically always trying to wash your hands before you actually start using the nebulizer. I think that's really important to do. So I'm not sure if you can see it. I've put the, the medication in here and you can see that there's some fluid in there. I'm not sure if, if it's visible on the camera, but basically there are two milliliters in there. And there is actually on the side a little line that would tell me that there are two milliliters in there. And then I'm going to just keep everything straight so I don't spill the medication out, but don't worry, it doesn't spill that easily. And I'm just going to screw the top back on, which is a simple sort of thing, uh, which goes like this. So I'm starting now, three, two, one, go. And I hope that you can see that it's starting to produce uh, some sort of a mist. And this is the aerosol you would inhale. 
so now that this is operating basically I am going to just try to use it to put the mask on in order to inhale now obviously you can start it with the mask already on it's up to you and the aerosol is coming and it tastes a bit salty because it's just normal saline so I'm talking now but you shouldn't be necessarily talking when you're doing this so you would just breathe normally a little bit more deeper than usual if you can so So you're trying to keep everything straight so basically this nebulizer you're trying not to spill the medication but as long as you keep it relatively level it should be absolutely fine and if you want it you could probably even read the newspaper while you're doing this if you're getting bored but you would be inhaling the medication and another thing you could do is basically to use another type of mouthpiece so if i remove the mask this is still producing some uh, aerosol. I'm not sure if you can see it, but I can use the pipe for example and I will put the pipe and then this would generate aerosol that comes out that way. I hope that you can see that. So I can also use it in this way, inhaling through here. So normally I tend to inhale through my mouth and out through my nose, slowly and deep. So I'm going to stop it now just to tell you that some of you may actually prefer to use this pipe like mouthpiece or other people may prefer to use the mask. Regardless of the ones you are using it should be absolutely the same effect. It just is a little bit more comfortable for some people to use the pipe, for some people to use the mask and have both of their hands free. Now what can you actually nebulize with these devices? What sort of medication can you put in there? So in this case, I've used normal saline. So I'm not sure if you can see, this is just normal saline, sodium chloride, 0.9%. Many people can use this, especially if they are trying to loosen up mucus, but this really doesn't have much effect whatsoever because it's basically normal saline. It's the same sort of salinity as your own bodily fluids. So it's not necessarily going to uh, help you move the mucus very much, although that humidity can sometimes help people move things out. And it does taste a little bit salty, even this one that I'm using, the 0.9%. Some people can sometimes use hypertonic saline. So this is when you have a saline solution, so normal salty water, but it's 3% or 4% or 5% or more. It depends on the use case. But with hypertonic saline, so with the uh, saline solution that is more than 0.9%, I would really, really advise you, especially if you are suffering with a respiratory condition already, such as asthma or some other respiratory condition, to have that tested in clinic before you actually start using it yourself. Because some people, because the salty water can be actually quite an irritant, it can actually trigger your lungs to, to spasm a little bit and to have a little bit of an asthma attack, for example. So it's quite important to be a little bit careful when you use nebulizers. Nebulizers are not from, for everyone. And ideally, what should be done is that you would test out the nebulizer with your doctor or with your um, specialist nurse or in a healthcare setting, basically, just to make sure that you're actually responding well to the nebulizer and it's not making matters worse. Because like I said, especially with the hypertonic saline, with the saline solution that is more than 0.9%, you can sometimes get a little bit of a bronchospasm. So sometimes it helps you clear secretions better because that excess salt actually moves the mucus, but it's not always easy for everyone to tolerate that. So ideally you should have uh, either an observation with your doctor or you may have a spirometry done before and after you use the nebulizer just to check whether your lung function stays stable while you're inhaling this type of aerosol. The other thing that can be nebulized is something called short-acting bronchodilators. So short-acting bronchodilators are medications that open up the airways but they do so, their action is actually for only a few hours. So this is the most common type of medication that will be used in a nebulizer, especially for patients who have 
asthma or some other respiratory condition where they get bronchospasms. These medications may include salbutamol or albuterol or ventolin. This is the, these are the common names for more or less the same medication. Another medication that can be used, which is also a short-acting bronchodilator, is something called ipratropium, which is a different type of bronchodilator, short-acting as well. So it's similar in a way to ventolin or to salbutamol, but it just acts in a different way. So sometimes your doctor may suggest that you use these as a combination. So you may use salbutamol and ipratropium in the same sort of solution that you put inside this uh, little um, medication holder and you inhale two medications at the same time. So this can again be handy in the cases of asthma attacks, especially when you need to administer quite a lot of medication because usually the dose that you put in a nebulizer is a lot more than you would get in a normal inhaler. The other thing that can be sometimes inhaled is inhaled corticosteroids. Now corticosteroids are medications that are there to reduce inflammation in the lungs. And again, this is very helpful in asthma. So in asthma, we use inhaled corticosteroids, these anti-inflammatory medications, to control the inflammation in the airways that's actually leading to asthma attacks. So by controlling that, we can actually control the asthma. Now generally, we tend to administer inhaled corticosteroids through inhalers, different inhaler devices. But for some of these corticosteroids, such as budesonide or pulmicort or fluticasone or flixotide, they can be also found in solutions for nebulization. So that's sometimes handy, especially in children or in patients who are really, really struggling with inhaler technique because they would actually need this medication to help control asthma over the long period of time. And having a nebulizer can sometimes help where you are really, really struggling with inhaler technique. But ideally, you should be using an inhaler. The nebulizer should be a backup for moments when you can't really use the inhaler. And obviously, you can imagine with such a device, you have to plug it in. You have to use all this gear in order to actually get the medication in. And like I mentioned, you can sometimes also mix solutions together. Now, this could be, for example, you would use a little bit of saline. For example, you'd use two milliliters of saline and then you'd use, for example, one milliliter of the ventolin solution, for example. So the salbutamol, the, the inhaled bronchodilator. So you would mix these together in different ratios, depending on how your doctor advised you, because you're maybe trying to get a specific amount of medication in. So please talk to your doctor to determine what solution for nebulization you should be using in your case, depending on what you're trying to achieve. The final thing that I'd like to discuss is cleaning. So it's really, really important to keep the nebulizer as clean as possible. Now, the bits that you do need to clean are actually the medication holder, the mouthpiece or the mask. Tubing itself doesn't need to be washed. So normally the recommendation is that after you're done using the nebulizer, you would basically take all these bits apart. You'd uh, remove the cover of the medication holder. You'd remove the mouthpiece. You'd sort of open them up in all the bits and then you would rinse them a little bit underwater and air dry them. So you would put them to the side on a tissue, on a towel, and just let them air dry after you've rinsed them out. Another way to do it, if you want to be a little bit more thorough, is to use soapy water. So you would basically just have some water and soap in a little bowl, and you would just dip, dip these in, just sort of swish, 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 move around, clean them out, and then rinse them with normal water without any soap, and then let them stand on a towel or on a tissue on the side to air dry. Every now and then, it's also recommended to also do a deep cleaning of these bits. So you would use white vinegar and water to make a solution in a bowl. You just dip these in, sort of making sure that they're all covered up by this sort of vinegar and water solution for a while. And then you would basically take them out, rinse them and let them air dry, just like before. So using a nebulizer is actually quite easy. It's just it can be a little bit fiddly like with many little devices. With the inhalers, it's the same situation. And I've showed you in other videos that it's just a matter of learning the right technique. And once you have the technique down, it's very easy. Now, the machine that I used in this video is just, like I said, one of the cheapest 
nebulizer machines that I could find on Amazon UK. I'm sure you can find equivalents in your own country, not necessarily on Amazon, you can find it anywhere. Now I, I'll leave a link to the machine that I bought so you can find it and check it out for yourself if you want. And that is an affiliate link if you, uh, that helps support the channel if you end up buying something on Amazon. But I mean, I do not endorse necessarily using this specific uh, nebulizer machine, this Hang Sun machine. You can use something else if you want. So as long as it does the job, because most of them will do the same, and you'll find probably hundreds of models of nebulizers out there. Some of them, like I said, are a bit cheaper, some of them are more expensive, but it really depends on the use case. Now, it is theoretically said that, especially if you need to inhale, uh, inhale corticosteroids, these sort of compressor nebulizers are not necessarily the best. However, like I said, the evidence around um, comparing different nebulizers to each other is not as strong as I would have expected. And I, I have a feeling that much of it is related to aggressive marketing from the more um, expensive sort of nebulizer companies, let's say. But don't take my word for it. Do your own research and figure out which one you could afford, which one uh, your doctor would recommend in your case. And it's really a matter of just you know, getting one if you really need one. Because like I said, most patients don't actually need a nebulizer. So don't get it if you don't think you'll have a use for it. And the main thing that I would like to say just before I finish this, use it only if you need it and keep it clean because you don't want to be inhaling any junk from uh, an uncleaned mask that is growing fungus or anything like that. So talk to your doctor if you're having any issues and I hope you found this helpful and I'll see you in future videos. Thank you for watching. All the best. Good health.